Okay, I'm going to read a bit about the birth of Bice of Colour. I came out as bisexual in 1993. My revelation came a year after I ran away from people I'd grown up with. I'd run away, sorry, I arrived in my part of London, homeless, penniless, sick, but free to live my life of choosing. My first try at becoming involved in anything LGBT was at a black lesbian group in North London. I naively thought it might be an accepting place for me, but I was told in very clear terms that bisexuals weren't welcome. A phone call to London Lesbian and Gay Switchboard also revealed massive biphobia. I was told there was nothing for me in England and I should try Scotland instead. That's what, those are the actual words I was told. Despite these setbacks, I tried finding and joining one of the bisexual communities, which was a lot more difficult at the time because the internet wasn't widely available. I went to the London Bisexual Women's Group for almost a year. I was the only black person there, apart from one occasion when there was two of us. Every visit, someone was guaranteed to ask me where I was from, or sometimes what part of Africa I was from. I'm not. I'm from Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> Over time... Why did I say that? Sorry. It's true. Um, I just hate the football team. Over time, my annoyance about this turned to extreme irritation. I was... Um, another issue was a constant emphasis on BDSM. I was later to be interested in that, well, many years later, but then it felt alienating and scary. That only added to my feelings of being isolated. It was about this time when I went on my first Pride March. I came up against misogyny and racism from white gay men, which I wasn't expecting. I was treated like a novelty and expected to perform for their amusement. I felt totally lost with everything to do with LGBT matters. I decided to leave it all behind. I knew I'd be lonely, but I also knew there were worse things than being alone. <clears throat> I longed to be either lesbian or straight. Bisexuality meant I was on the losing side no matter what. It took me a long time to get over my fear of the treatment I'd received. In the intervening time, I found names for things I was interested in, like polyam polyamory, sensation play and more. It was a, a one-day polyamorous event, Poly Day 2006, that someone told me about Brighton Bifest, a bi event that would be happening in 2007 as part of Winter Pride. I decided to go along and was so impressed by how friendly it was that I went to Bicon 2007. I'd heard of Bicon beforehand, but I never thought it would be for me. I had a magical time at Bicon in Glamorgan. It was, it was without a doubt the best time in my life un until then. On the second day, I started crying, which was strange. It surprised me. And the man asked me if I was okay, and I said I'd been hugged more times in two days at Bicon than I had done in my entire life put together. And I suppose it's silly to think of every Bicon being as wonderful as that. I, I soon learned in the next two years that racism, sexism and classism were prevalent in bi communities. Things came to a head just before Bicon 2009 when one of the organisers used Islamophobic and racist swerp slurs in a public forum. Only two people initially called him out about this behaviour, and those two people were to form bias of colour. The organiser used the standard derailing phrases when he was asked to stop. He couldn't possibly be racist, he had black friends. Actually what he said was, I can't be racist, I teach English as a foreign language. Yeah. That's what he said. After speaking to my friend, we agreed that we could have a session at the next BICON with bisexuals of colour. And as BICON 2010 would be an international BICON, it would be an opportunity for overseas bisexuals to join in. Surely you wouldn't be the only ones in the room. BICON 2010 took place in London. I nervously waited outside the room when we were due to have our session. I was petrified that someone would make trouble, but nobody did. Seventeen bisexuals of colour walked in the room. Each person talked, they cried, they got angry and then they laughed. And then the next person did exactly the same thing. At the end of it, everyone went off to have lunch together and everyone was smiling. A few hours later, at a decision-making session, several delegates got up on stage to complain that bisexuals of colour shouldn't have their own separate session. They also said the same thing for trans people too. I sat at the back of the lecture hall, fuming, cursing under my breath, 
while I gripped my girlfriend's hand. When a white delegate said we should justify why we need to save space, surely Bicon's friendly to all, I finally stood up. I walked down to the lectern and addressed everyone. Can everyone who's able please stand up? I waited a moment. Now all the white people sit down. I pointed to the scattering of black and brown faces. That's all the explanation you're going to get and that's all you need. We've had bisexuals of colour sessions at Bicon every year since then. We've also had sessions at Bifest and we've given talks about the experiences of black and minority ethnic bisexuals up and down the UK. Bites of Colour as a group is still going strong. Our online presence is huge. We're on Twitter, Facebook and Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels great to know that um, people know we exist and that there's a safe space for us, which is just wonderful. At Bicon 2012, we even had our own flat, which was, which was particularly good. I wish that Bicon was more welcoming to everyone, but it isn't. I wish the UK bisexual communities were a place that racism, Islamophobia and other kinds of religious bigotry didn't exist, but they do. And until such a time when things change drastically, there will always be a need for bites of colour. Thank you.